Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Girdler. Here. Senator McDaniel. Senator Webb. Here. Representative Heron. Representative Petrie. Here. Representative Thomas. Present. Co-Chair Freeland. Chair Howell. Here. All right, we do have a quorum. First items, uh, approval of minutes to have a motion. With the motion is second. Any objections? Those are passed. Uh, Catherine, please uh, review the information items. <coughs> Pursuant to KRS 45765, the University of Kentucky reported three <coughs> federally funded equipment purchases. Pursuant to KRS 45766, UK reported its intent to change funding sources for three projects, of which there is also a project authorization consolidation. Pursuant to KRS 45821, four school districts, none of which needed an additional tax levy to pay debt service, reported upcoming debt issues for new projects. The school districts were Green County, Middlesbrough Independent, Nelson County, and Oldham County. Well, thank you. Um, Next item up, we got project report from Finance Administration. We have Kevin Cardwell here. Uh, we have two items on. Do I have a motion to roll all these action items? Motion. Has there been a motion by Senator Webb? Is there a second? Second. second. No objections. Oh. Mr. Cardwell, welcome. Introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair Hal and other members of the committee. Uh, my name is Kevin Cardwell. I'm Deputy State Budget Director. And as you mentioned, I'm here today to, to present a few projects in accordance with the provisions of KRS 45750 through 45800. Uh, I have four projects today. Two of them will be action items and two of them will be pool allocation projects. So I'm start with the action items that you rolled into one. So military affairs is the first one to present on today for the Barberville Readiness, Readiness Center Latrine Upgrade. This project uh, is in, in the amount of $1,946,000. What we're reporting today is to amend the fund source split from 75% federal, 25% bond and investment income funds to a split of 98% federal, 2% bond funds from the 2018-2020 Armory Modernization Pool. Project includes the renovation upgrades to add female latrine showers, upgrade the existing men's latrine and showers, replace the existing boiler system with a more energy efficient HVAC system, upgrade windows, remove and replace existing tile floors, and upgrade lighting and do some painting. Would you like me to proceed to the second one? Okay. Uh, transportation cabinet is the second item. It's in the general administration and support unit and we're talking today the replacement of the automated vehicle information system commonly referred to as CAVIS. We're reporting an appropriation increase in the amount of 2.5 million dollars from restricted funds which equates to an 8.6 percent increase and brings the total scope to 31.5 million for this project. The additional 2.5 million will enable the cabinet to finalize functionality for the system. The project was originally authorized in the 2008-2010 biennial budget and created the Kentucky Automated Vehicle Information System. This system will streamline and improve effectiveness within the Department of Vehicle Regulation, Division of Motor Vehicle Licensing, and the County Clerk's offices throughout the state. Uh, those are the two items for today. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, do we have any questions on any of these items? Anybody with any comments or questions? Do I have a motion to approve? Do we have a motion? Is there a second? A motion and a second. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Gardler. Aye. Senator McDaniel. Senator Webb. Representative Heron, Representative Petrie. Yes. Representative Thomas. Aye. Co-Chair Freeland, Chair Howell. Aye. That passes. We have the two pool allocations for you to review. This will not have any uh, vote needed. Thank you, sir. And I'll present, uh, so I have, like you said, I have two pool projects in excess of a million dollars today. First one is for the Tourism, Arts, and Heritage Cabinet, Department of Parks, 
and it's the Kentucky Dam Village Infrastructure Sewer Upgrades Project in the amount of $2,530,000, which is funded from the Wastewater Treatment and Infrastructure Upgrade Pool Bond Fund account, which was enacted in House Bill 268 of the 2019 regular session of the General Assembly. This project is for phase one construction services, upgrades to the sewer services. The system is more than 50 years old with a significant failure that allows inflow and infiltration of groundwater during rain events. Work will address collection system issues of failing gravity flow piping and pump stations by rehabbing the broken gravity line and replacing a rehab the, of the pump stations. Second one today is for the Justice and Public Safety Cabinet, Department of Corrections, at, uh, for the Kentucky State Penitentiary Sewer Repairs Project. And it is in the amount of $2,205,206. It's funded with $5,000 from the 2020-22 bond funded maintenance pool and $2,200,206, 2, pardon me, 206 from the 2224 general fund maintenance pool. The cast iron sewer drain lines in the five cell house at the Kentucky State Penitentiary have failed. Eight inch diameter lines between the kitchen ceiling and the first floor have longitudinal cracks as long as 50 feet that have opened up causing raw sewage at, at times to drain into the kitchen. This project will replace the existing horizontal lines and restore the cell house to a usable condition. Uh, the kitchen will be required to uh, be through a shutdown for a duration of the project, and this project will consist of a temporary kitchen as well. Removal and replacement of portions of the kitchen ceiling, cosmetic repairs to the ceiling, and replacement of the damaged piping. Those are the two items that I have. Thank you. Pools. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? These don't require a motion. Thank you for being on top of it, Senator Webb. Um, Mr. Carwell, we appreciate appreciate your time. Thanks Thank so you. Much. Next up, we have Scott Aubrey appearing remotely to review lease reports from the Finance and Administration Cabinet. Um, we have one issue on a lease modification that will require action and some discussion on emergency leases that we won't. Mr. Aubrey, are you there? There you are. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Please Scott Aubrey with the Division of Rural Properties, Finance and Administration Cabinet. The floor is yours. All right. The uh, first item I have is a lease modification for the Department of Corrections in Jefferson County. This lease is being modified to add five additional offices, replacing uh, the existing floor coverings, removing wallpaper, repairing walls, and necessary painting. Um, estimates were obtained for the various items of work needed. The total cost of the work is $127,645.98 and will be amortized over the remaining term of the lease that expires June 30th of 2029. Anyone have any questions on this for Mr. Aubrey? If if not, do we have a motion to approve? We have a motion. Is there a second? second. <clears throat> it's been motioned and seconded. With no further questions, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Girdler. Aye. Senator McDaniel. Aye. Senator Webb. Representative Heron. Representative Petrie. Yes. Representative Thomas. Aye. Co-Chair Freeland, Chair Howell. Aye. With that, that passes. Um, Mr. Aubrey, please continue to discuss on the discussion about the emergency leases. Yes, sir. The second item is a lease agreement amendment, which is a lease for the transportation cabinet in Graves County. This lease is being amended to decrease the number of temporary housing sites from 40 to 13, being effective September 15th of 2022. Would you like for me to keep going through these? Yes, please. Go through all of them. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, the next item is a lease agreement amendment, which is a lease with the Transportation Cabinet in Graves County. This lease is being amended to decrease the number of temporary housing sites from 13 to 6, effective September 15th of 2022. The next item is a uh, lease amendment for the Transportation Cabinet in Warren County. This lease is being amended to decrease the number of temporary housing sites from 12 to four, effective November 1st of 2022. The fifth item I have is a new lease, which is a lease for the transportation cabinet in Clay County. Temporary housing is needed for the families whose houses were damaged during the flooding that occurred in July of this year. The lease pre 
properties provide sites with, with basic utility hookups to place non-congregate shelters. Therefore, leases were procured through the non-competitive negotiations. As a result, the Commonwealth entered into a lease for seven suitable lots. The lots are leased on a month-to-month -month basis at a cost of $300 per site per month. The sixth item I have is a new lease for the transportation cabinet in Knott County. Again, temporary housing was needed for families whose houses were damaged by flooding that occurred in July of this year. The lease properties provide sites with basic utility hookups to place non-congregate shelters. The leases were procured through non-competitive negotiations. And as a result, the Commonwealth entered into a lease for 60 suitable lots. And these lots are leased on a month-to-month -month basis at a cost of $1,000 per site per month. The last item I have is a new lease for the transportation cabinet in Perry County. Temporary housing, again, is needed for the families who were displaced due to the uh, flooding damage that occurred in July of this year. The lease properties provide sites with basic utility hookups to place these non-congregate shelters. The leases were procured through non-competitive negotiations, and as a result, the Commonwealth entered into a lease for 40 available lots, and these lots are leased on a month-to-month -month basis at no cost. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Albert? Representative Petrie. Thank you very much. Uh, a simple question, I believe, just a clarification. Um, I'm hearing leases for housing, but this is coming through transportation. So, so can you explain why we're the connection between the two? Uh, yes, sir. Um, we have a couple of folks here from transportation cabinet that could help us out with answering that question. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, this is Kyle Pote, uh, Chief District Engineer in District 1, Paducah. Uh, so in regards to the Transportation Cabinet's involvement, uh, as, as we experienced the tornadoes here in Western Kentucky, uh, the Transportation Cabinet was uh, commissioned by the governor and the governor's office to oversee the non-congregate sheltering mission uh, as we had better capacity from a contracting standpoint as well as a oversight and uh, maintenance standpoint. Um, and so then we rolled that same particular operation to the Eastern Kentucky side. Actually myself, uh, I have been the one administering both for the Western Kentucky side and Eastern Kentucky since the flood there. Uh, so it was really more of a standpoint uh, that the transportation cabinet had the personnel and the means to oversee contracts uh, for installation and build out of sites. Follow up. Follow up. Sure. Um, I understand that on a, an emergency basis, is there any plan to transition to a different agency as we go to more permanent long term uh, housing issues? Yes, that is correct. Uh, we actually have had meetings with FEMA as recent as this past week to try to transition our non-congregate sheltering program uh, into their longer term uh, oversight and actually have already identified several of the survivors that do qualify for FEMA and those particular transactions are occurring as we speak. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else with any questions for Mr. Aubrey? Without any, thank Kyle, um, Kyle, Mr. Albert, appreciate your time. Um, moving on to the next item, we have Sandy Williams remotely for KIA. We deal with a few, couple of items uh, with clean water program grants. To I have a motion to roll those all into one. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. The motion is second. Any objection? Ms. Williams, please proceed with the uh, action items when we vote, then we can get on to the House Bill 1 grants. Thank you, Chairman Howell and members of the committee. I'm Sandy Williams, Executive Director with the Kentucky Infrastructure Authority. Pursuant to KRS 224A100, the authority will present one loan and 421 grants for the committee's review. First, the City of Mount Sterling. They have a $7.3 million increase request for their wastewater capacity upgrade project. The project was initially approved in March 2021, and the increase will bring the total KIA loan amount to $19,650,000. Since the original approval, two things have changed. The landfill, where the wastewater treatment plant disposes of solids, has limited the amount of sludge allowed to be dumped per day and construction costs have continued to increase. 
The project has been modified to include the purchase of an aerobic digester at a cost of approximately $3 million, which will reduce the amount of sludge generated and transferred to the landfill. The remaining 4.3 million will cover bed overruns. The original terms and conditions of the loan remain the same. This is a 20 year loan with a 1% interest rate and the increase was approved at KIA's December 1st board meeting. Of the, would you like for me to continue? Yeah, I have a question on that one before you do. And, and this may not, you may not be the right person to ask this, but as far as the landfill limiting the solid waste sludge, was mm -hmm. there any kind of contract with this landfill for any of those, it, it, Do you know anything about the, the backstory reasoning for that? No, sir, I do not. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, go ahead and proceed with the other one. Then. Thank you. Of the 418 Cleaner Water Program grants, um, 16 of those are reallocations from previously presented projects. And then 402 are new projects. Um, that leaves uh, 130 for sewer and 288 for water. Sorry about that, Ms. Williams. Um, so of the, of the uh, 418 Cleaner Water Program grants, um, 16 are reallocations, 402 are new projects out of the, the round two funding. 130 of those are for sewer, 288 are for water, and 18 of those projects, sir, are in your district. Always glad to see that. Um, <laughs> And the cost increases we're seeing on some of this stuff, is that just the standard stuff that we've been talking about all year with, with everything we're seeing across the board? Yes, sir, it is. Anyone have any questions on any of these? No questions. Um, do we have a motion to approve? We have a motion. Is there a second? Second by Senator Webb. Um, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Gardler. I, if uh, Sandy will go through these individually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh -huh. Senator Webb. Uh, Senator McDaniel, Representative Heron. Representative Petrie. He's going through. Representative uh, Petrie. No. Representative Thomas. Aye. Co-Chair Freeland. Chair Howell. Aye. Those items were approved. Um, we <laughs> continue with the House Bill 1 grants. These will require no action, but we need to proceed with pre presentation on that, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So of the three House Bill 1 light item grants, those are from the 2022 regular session. Um, one is a sewer project in Hart County for the Hart County Industrial Authority, the T. Marzetti plant, and two are water projects in Meade County that are associated with the Ford Blue Oval project. Thank you. Is there any questions about this? I need to go and clear up one thing. I misspoke earlier. Uh, the Sure.
Thank you, Dezina. Um If no one has any other questions for Ms. Williams, I do need to clear up one thing. I misspoke previously. Uh, though there was not enough votes to pass on these prior two, and we will table those until the next meeting. Uh, there's some procedural questions involved on so, uh, some new procedures we're doing, and we want to make sure we get those right. So we're tabling those until the January meeting. Ms. Williams, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up, we have Ryan Barrow uh, to talk with us about the Kentucky housing. Yes, please. That, that requires no action. It's just for information purposes only. Uh, proceed with your school debt issues. I didn't realize you had four. Yeah. So is there a motion to roll all these into one? We have a motion. Do we have a second? With no objection, we'll roll all these into one. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? With none, do I have a motion to approve? We have a, we have a motion by Representative Thomas. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Webb. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Gardner. Aye. Senator McDaniel. Senator Webb. Representative Heron, Representative Petrie, yes. Representative Thomas, aye. Co-chair Howell, uh, Freeland, Chair Howell, uh, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barrow. Um, with that, we're to the end. There, we will have a, a January meeting. It's not been scheduled yet. Um, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs>